Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. Today we're gonna make caramel sauce and I'll show you how to can it. We're gonna make a specific kind of caramel sauce that's called cajeta and it's just made from goat's milk, but you can use cow's milk or any kind of milk and the caramel sauce um, is made just the same. At the end, I'm gonna show you um, a couple variations that you can um, make from this caramel sauce. We'll do a salted caramel and a chocolate caramel sauce. Okay, I'm gonna do a two gallon batch, but I'm just gonna give you the recipe breakdown for what it's like for one quart, because it's unlikely um, that most people are gonna make two gallons worth of caramel sauce. Um, but I like to do everything once, get all the work done one time, and have a lot to put on the shelf. So I'm gonna start with two gallons of goat's milk. This is from Willow. If you remember, she just had babies a little bit ago and the babies are already at, are already at their new house. So that leaves lots of milk for us. Mr. Reeve milks twice a day. I just have this milk in these um, pickle and olive jars. And just dump it in the pot. Now I use a thick bottom pot. This has a three quarter inch steel bottom on it um, because we're gonna heat this up for a long time and I really don't want the milk to scorch. Um, so that thick bottom pot helps me be able to um, walk away a little bit and not stand here for a couple of hours. Okay, for every quart of milk, you're going to add one cup of sugar. And we have two gallons of milk. There's four quarts in a gallon. So we have eight quarts in here. So that means eight cups of sugar. We're almost done with all the stuff that goes in there. Surprising, huh? Okay, for every quart of milk, you're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, since we have two gallons in there, we're gonna need two teaspoons altogether. I buy this baking soda in bulk, because um, for me it's cheaper that way. I use baking soda for a lot of things. Um, I even make carpet powder out of it. For every quart of milk, we're gonna add a quarter of a tablespoon of um, vanilla. This is just some homemade vanilla I made. Um, maybe I'll do a video about that, it's pretty simple. I just put some vodka in this old bottle and some vanilla beans and I let it sit for a long time. Um, these vanilla beans have been in here for probably three years. I use some vanilla and I pour more vodka in there. So <laughs> pretty simple. Um, but, so we have two gallons of milk in here, which is eight quarts of milk. Um, and for each quart, if I needed a quarter of a tea, of a tablespoon, I need two big tablespoons of vanilla. I've had this vanilla around for a long time. Here's the date on the bottom, apparently. I didn't realize till I was editing this video that I wrote it on the bottom. So uh, this vanilla is four years old, these beans are. And actually, I think this is the second time around for these beans. So I'll, I guarantee you they're probably two years older than this. Because this has vodka in it, I'm wanna, gonna wanna stir it pretty quick because I don't want it to curdle my milk. I don't know if it will, but maybe it will, I don't know. Okay, we got all of our ingredients in there. I'm stirring it up so that sugar gets dissolved and everything gets incorporated. I have it on low. Now in the beginning here, this milk is still really cold. Um, and so I'm gonna put a lid on it just until the milk heats up and starts evaporating. Then I'll take the lid off because I want that moisture to get out because otherwise it won't reduce down. Um, and I'm not gonna have to worry about it too much because like I said, I have this thick bottom pot um, but if I had maybe a thin stainless steel bottom pot, I'd have to be real careful about um, not scorching the milk or scalding the milk. Um, so for the next hour, I might stir it two or three times in the course of the next hour. As we get closer and as it starts to change, um, then I'll video that and let you see what it looks like. But right now it just looks like milk in a pan because, well, it is just milk in a pan. So we'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, it's been about an hour. There's no visible change in the milk. Um, it did get a little bit of a skin on the top, but that's no big deal. Um, you just mix it back in, but you can see it's nice and steamy. It's still on the stove's lowest setting on low. And now I'm gonna be a little more careful um, to not let it scorch to the bottom or scald. I guess I am scalding the milk. Okay, to not let it scorch to the bottom. That's why I'm stirring with a rubber spatula. Let's me really feel kind of if there's anything down there. Um, and so far the bottom of my pot's clean, so this is perfect. And we'll just keep letting it cook down. Um, and I'll bring you back when, when a change occurs. <laughs> 
Okay, we're still just cooking away. I am gonna turn this up a little bit. My stove goes from low to nine and then to high, so I'm just gonna turn it um, onto one or two right now, which is just right above low. And uh, this milk is hot enough and this pan with the thick bottom um, won't let it burn at the bottom. So I'm just gonna stir it a little bit more often, um, but I'm gonna turn it up so that we can maybe get done with this before the second coming. <laughs> okay, we're about two and a half hours in now. I wanted to show you that um, we're reducing down and the color's starting to change. So it's a little steamy in there, but you can see it's getting a little bit of a tan color. Okay, we're gonna keep reducing this down. I'm gonna leave the heat just a little bit above low. Um, I'm still not stirring it very often, maybe every 10 minutes or so. Um, and when it starts to get thick, it'll reduce down much quicker. But right now we're still uh, on the slow boat version. <laughs> okay, we've been cooking this down for about three hours now. Let me show you where we're at. You can see it's a nice caramel color now. I've turned it down to low because it's starting to get a little thicker. When I stir it, the evaporation gets kicked up. I want to do that more often now because I want this steam to come out so that the liquid comes out and my caramel gets thicker. Okay, we're boiling away and we're getting much thicker. Look at that. It's just boiling away. It's just on low. So I'm stirring more often. But it's not time to stand here the whole time yet. Pretty soon. Okay, it's been another half hour. Look at it just bubbling away. It's getting thicker. When I stir it, it'll evaporate. I'm gonna stir it a lot more often now. I don't think I'm gonna hang out at the stove full time just yet. Just every couple of minutes, I'm gonna stir. Okay, it's still pretty liquidy. Here, I'll see if I can show you. When it cools, it's kind of like a thickness of syrup, like pancake syrup. Um, I make sure to scrape the sides because that caramel that gets stuck on the sides cools. You can see it kind of beaded up on the side of the spoon there, on the side of the rubber spatula. Um, and so it's much thicker, um, but I want to keep it in the pot. All right. We'll keep trucking. Okay, I switched things around on the stove a little bit. I needed to get the water bath canner on here and this is the biggest burner. Um, this cajeta is still on low. Um, I'll show you it in just a minute. I wanted to tell you I got the water bath canner full, um, about four or five inches of water. It's heating up now. I just have enough water in there to go about an inch or two over the jars I plan on putting in here. And we're just gonna do um, half pint jars. Um, so we don't need a whole bunch of water in there. So that's heating up. I'll bring you over and I'll show you how our cahet is doing. Okay, I know I'm ready to stand at the stove and stir when I can run the rubber special along the bottom of the pan and it almost sounds like it's sizzling. It's just the little bubbles and a little bit getting stuck to the bottom. And I wanna do my very best to keep everything off the sides and the bottom of the pan because I don't want anything to burn and I want it to heat evenly and see how thick it's getting now. Let's see if I can get you to hear that sound I'm talking about. Can you hear that? It's like it almost bubbles up along the bottom. Now I can feel it. I feel little bubbles popping against the spatula on the bottom. And that's how I know that if I walk away, it's going to start sticking to the bottom. And then all my four and a half hours that we're into so far will get ruined. <laughs> now be a sad day for me. So... I'm just gonna stir, I might give it a little bit of a break here, let it warm back up, maybe 10 or 15 seconds, and then I'm gonna stir again, but I'm not gonna walk away at this point. This caramel sauce is not the thickness that I'm looking for, but I wanna show you what it looks like um, if it might be the one you're looking for. If you're looking for a drizzling sauce, like to drizzle over um, like cheesecake or maybe um, a, a syrupy drizzle for ice cream, I'll show you. This is how I check it. I just get a clean dish and I drip a couple of drops in there. Let it cool for a moment. And we'll check its consistency. Just like you would check if you were um, making candy, really. Essentially, it's all it is. So, 
You can see the little the little drops are keeping their shape. And then you can see, oh, yep, it's staying on my finger. It's good. It's not runny. Mm. So you might can it at this stage, but I want something thicker. Um, Mr. Reeve has been putting the other batches I've made um, in his coffee. I'll show you how thick that is. I think I only have one jar left, which is why I needed to make more. But this is the Tejeta. <laughs> it's pretty thick. It's like, um, it's thick like pudding almost. Um, so he just puts a spoonful of that in his coffee and lets it uh, dissolve and stir. And it counts as his sweetener and his creamer. And it tastes like caramel, so he's real happy. <laughs> so I'm also making, um, we're going to make a chocolate one today so he can have like a mocha. You know, you got to keep him happy. Now this cajeta that I um, made earlier, I when I boiled down the milk, I stuck a cinnamon stick in the bottom. And when it started to get thick, the milk started to get thick like it is now, then I pulled the cinnamon stick out. So this um, is cinnamon flavored one. Um, and you could also just add ground cinnamon at the end um, if you wanted a cinnamon one. But, but I really liked adding the cinnamon stick in at the beginning. And um, it really tastes like cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> So, and if that's not the best cereal, I don't know what is. <laughs> so, anyways, but we're not making that kind today. I just thought if you wanted to make the cinnamon variety, you could stick a cinnamon stick in there or put some ground cinnamon in at the end. All right, I'll keep stirring. We'll be back in just a moment. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes since we were at the drizzling sauce stage. I want to show you what consistency I like it at. Okay, we'll turn the heat off. I'll show you. All right, so this is cooled in here. You can see it doesn't run at all. And if I use my finger, it stays up on there. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I want the kind of sauce you can eat with a spoon. <laughs> Some of this I'm just gonna leave as the original caramel sauce and I'll put those in little jars and, and water bath it with everything else. But I want to show you how I make the two other varieties, the salted caramel and the chocolate caramel. I use Redmond's Livestock Salt because it is significantly cheaper um, than the real salt. If you want to watch a video on how I justify using the Livestock Salt versus the real salt, um, the people version, I'll link the video at the end for you. But basically, I'm going to stick this in my little spice grinder and spice it up so any extra big grit pieces get all ground down fine. Um, and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to mix it in. There we go. Fine salt with no grit. Okay, now if you have running water, you might take out however much salted caramel um, sauce you want to make and put it in another container and mix it up. But I don't have running water, so I try to reduce this as much as I can. I'm just going to put it right in the jar. I'm going to give it half to a quarter inch of headspace. Okay, I'm gonna use um, half a teaspoon of salt for um, every half pint, because I don't like it so salty. So if you like a little more salty, add a little more salt. Okay. I'm gonna take a chopstick or just whatever you can shove in there and mix it in. Look how thick it is. It's like totally sticking to that guy. Okay. I'm just going to set it in the next jar so it doesn't make a big old mess. I'm going to get this. Actually, this room is perfectly clean. If it was dirty, you could get a, um, a paper towel with a little bit of vinegar and put it on there. Um, but this is a brand new jar. It's perfectly clean. I'm going to put the lid on. Okay. It's getting warm. <laughs> And the ring's gonna go on finger tight, which just means I'm gonna turn it till it just catches. And then I'm gonna turn it an eighth of a circumference of the jar um, to tighten it, or you can think about it like an eighth of the turn. 
and then I'm gonna stick it in the, in the water bath canner and get the rest of them ready to go. So I'll meet you back in just a second when we do the chocolate ones. Okay, we did four jars of salted caramel. I'm gonna try to do six jars of chocolate caramel and then the rest is just gonna be um, plain original flavor of caramel. Um, so for every cup, which is a half a pint of caramel sauce, you're gonna use one tablespoon of powdered cocoa. Now I try to get cocoa that doesn't have any fillers or anything in it. My lovely neighbor, Miss Linda, let me borrow her cocoa because I was out. Thanks, Miss Linda. And I'm going to get a tablespoon of it out. See, if I just had one more hand, this would be easier. I'm going to leave the jar funnel in it um, just so that when I mix, that powder doesn't go everywhere. My chopstick mixing seemed to work just fine. We're going to do the same head space. Okay, got that all mixed up. It would definitely be easier if I mixed it in another bowl, but I'm not really ready to give in on that yet. I don't want to wash yet one more sticky, sugary dish without running water. So we'll get this all cleaned off. Always run my fingers on to make sure I got everything off of there. Same thing, we put the lid on there, put the ring on there, finger tight, put it in there. Five more jars to go. Okay, we got 13 half pints out of that recipe and uh, we're gonna bring this up to a boil. We're gonna let it water bath for 20 minutes and then we'll turn it off and let it cool. Okay, we're done. We're gonna turn it off, turn off the timer, put my heat proof glove on. You're really supposed to wait 10 minutes. Okay, don't look at my bad example. There's the chocolate one. That one's all right, huh? Look at that. Ooh, mama. That's good, huh? Okay, we'll get these out of here and let it cool. Um, and I'll see you back in just a second. There's the chocolate. He's pretty beautiful. <laughs> Here's the salted caramel. I'm going to leave um, the ingredient list in the description below for both a quart version and a gallon version. Um, I'll also leave links to all the equipment that we use today if any of it interests you. Um, as always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. I hope you enjoyed my Cajeta video today. To all of you that um, follow me for my cooking videos, um, keep in mind that in Alaska we uh, run things seasonally and it's outdoor season right now, so there's a lot more garden videos. But if you hold on just a little bit longer, winter will be back and there'll be lots of cooking videos again. Thanks always for your support. You guys stay warm out there.